hello guys welcome to today's video in this video we'll be looking at what design theory is all about and um, design theory plays a very very important role in the success of every effective design work so let's get into it so let's start by breaking down the words so what's graphic design graphic design is the effective visual communication of an idea or concept to a particular audience and what's theory Theory is a system of ideas intended to explain something particular. Moving on, now what's design theory then? Design theory is this, a system of ideas that explain how and why design works. So this system helps graphic designers better understand how they can communicate a message to an audience through visuals. Okay, designers need to know how everything they put on a page communicates, influences, directs, invites entices and excites an audience design theory helps explain all of that explains the why in a design and in design theory there are two very important things we have design elements and design principles and let's look at what these are design elements design elements are the fundamental building blocks of any visual composition so we have things like lines shapes texture color typography and space these are the important ones if you google you'll see other ones but i think these ones are the core ones and graphic designers use design elements to create designs that convey a certain mode that draws the eyes of an audience in a certain direction and also invoke a number of feelings now let's move on to what design principles are design principles so these are a set of rules and techniques on how to use the various design elements to create strong visual compositions. Remember, a composition is just basically the arrangement of design elements on a page, okay? There are so many design principles, so many of them, more than 12 of them. So we'll pick five important ones and look at them, the core ones. So let's start by looking at the various design elements. So we have the line. The first and basic element of design is the line. A line is any two connected points, as you see on the image below here. Lines can be straight, they can be curved, they can be smooth, they can be rough, they can be continuous, they can be broken, thick, or even thin. Lines can also be horizontal, they can be vertical, and they can be diagonal. And let's just look at designs where lines are being used, like here. You see how lines are being used throughout these designs, deliberately by the designers. Moving on to the next design elements. We have shape or you can also call it form when two dimensional lines enclose an area a shape is formed we have shapes like these ones shape like these ones used throughout so shapes can be geometric or organic so these are geometric shapes here and here we have these organic shapes objects we can recognize in the, in the physical world and see how shapes are being used throughout these designs here intentionally by the graphic designers and you learn how to do all of this moving on to the next design element we have texture texture refers to the way a surface feels and in design it creates a perception of how a surface could feel it creates a more dynamic visually appealing experience while also adding depth to a design like you see this certain material when you see a design where this certain material is used you can perceive how it feels how the surface feels like same thing with this grass same thing with this rough wall right you get the idea and so you see these are designs where texture has been used just to add some depth to the design it helps us be part of design and feel the design moving on to the next one Color, this one is quite important. Color is perceived when light waves strike an object and reflect back to the optic nerves of the eye. So color is basically light of a particular wavelength. Color can stand out on its own. Color can act as a background. And color can also be used to highlight other design elements. Color can be used to establish a mode in a design tool. And when studying colors, we look at properties such as hue, saturation, 
luminosity. We also look at things like color psychology, the emotions color can evoke. And we'll see color harmony, how to use colors together and which colors work best with each other. And in these designs, you just see how colors are being used by designers. Why designers chose these particular colors. We'll see all of that when looking at colors. Moving on to the next element of design, we have typography. Typography is the use of typefaces to communicate in words. Typography is very important because it literally conveys a message you want to communicate to an audience. Some of the terms we have point size, leading, tracking, and kerning. We'll look at all of these in the individual videos for each of these. We will also look at typeface classification and typeface pairing, how to use different typefaces together, like you see on this photo down here, how different typefaces are being used together, how they are paired, and how see how graphic, other graphic designers approach typography, how they use typography to create amazing compositions. So moving on to the next design element, we have space. This refers to the area above, below, around, and behind an object. That's basically what space is. And in graphic design, we have two types of space. We have positive space and negative space. Positive space, these are areas of interest, such as a person's face, furniture, etc. Like here, this positive space, because it's, it's an area of interest. This positive space, this text here, this positive space, because that's something, that's an area of interest, that's something the, the viewer can read, right? And move on to negative space. These are so just empty areas on the design, like this empty space here, this empty space, so this negative space, this empty space is here, negative spaces. So we have positive space and negative space. And let's look at other designs, like so. So this black area is negative space. This um, writing here is positive space. Negative space around, positive space, okay? And that's the last design element we'll be looking at here. So now let's move on to design principles. Onto the first one, we have alignment. Let's compare this first design here and this second design here. Which one feels visually appealing to you? I think this one, okay? Because the, the elements are properly aligned, but here they're just scattered, so you, you're not really sure where to start and how to process them. Aligning elements create visual connections and creates a unified design. It allows the viewer's eyes to see order, which leads to easier and more comfortable reading. Alignment can be centered, left, right, or justified, as you see here. This text is left aligned, right aligned here, centered and justified. So we would see how other designers approach alignment in the upcoming videos. Moving on to the next one. We have repetition. Repeating elements in design creates associations and familiarity. So this helps the viewer understand how separate elements belong together, right? Repetition can also be used to quickly and easily identify a particular brand, very important. And this could involve repeating the same typefaces throughout the design, the same shapes, the same colors, and so on. Like being done here, the same thing here, same thing here. And you see the same idea here. Just repeating the design elements to establish familiarity in your designs. Moving on, we have contrast. This one is very important. So this is one of the most important or the most effective ways to create emphasis in your designs. Contrast is created when two elements that are complete opposites are used. It highlights what should stand out the most and it also helps to direct the viewer's eyes. And contrast can be created in different ways. We can create contrast using size or scale, like here. When you look at this, these two shapes here. I'm sure your eyes fall on this one first. So using contrast, the size draws our eyes to this one before this one. Same thing here, if we use these fonts or use these faces of different families, this one pulls your eyes, right? 
before this one. So it creates a contrast between these two. Same thing here. Using a thick and a thin line. That's using weight. We can also use colors. Using a warm color and a cool color. And yeah. So you see how contrast is created by other designers here. All right. Moving on to the next one. Hierarchy. This one too is very important. So in design, hierarchy is the arrangement of elements according to their importance. Take note of that according to their importance. So this creates visual organization to a design and gives the reader an idea of where to begin and finish reading. So it points out to the your viewer that start from here, then go to this one next, go to this one next, go to this one next. So you use this one to emphasize what's more important. And sometimes when you do a design for some clients, they'll be like, make this bigger, make this bigger, because they feel that that particular stuff is important. So it's important to make some particular items stand out. And in every design, there's just one message to communicate. Yeah. All right, so you see here how hierarchy is being used. What's more important here? Same thing here, same thing here. So we'll look at this design here. It starts here with no hierarchy moves on here, hierarchy has been added and moves on here, right? So you see, it helps direct the user's eyes or your viewer's eyes on where to start from. Okay. Moving on to the last one for this video, we have balance. So this is the way distributed on a page by how design elements are placed. So when we place elements on a page, it adds weight to the page. If you add elements just to this side of the page, the weight of the page is all directed to this side of the page. So as a designer, it's important to distribute the weight added on the page by the various elements throughout the design, like as you see here. So the weight is being stretched out through the design and it's very important to establish or to create balance in your designs. You see how balance has been created here and these other items placed here just to create this balance, balance in, the, in this design. So we have two kinds of balance. We have symmetrical balance, as you see here, this half and this half right and the next one we have balance by balance through tension so not necessarily using the same pieces like we have this one here so th this balance is created through tension so you see these are different design elements here but balance is already created so, same thing here so let's just look at this this one is symmetrical this one is not symmetrical so this on um, balance through tension same thing here. I'm sure I get the idea. Same thing here, balance retention. And that's going to be the last design principle. So being a good designer is more than just knowing how to use design software. It's about understanding design theory and how this theory affects your decisions and your outcomes. Okay. And that's it for this video so in the next videos we'll now pick up each of the design elements each of the design principles and talk about them in depth individually all right guys so if you have a question just feel free to ask the question in the comment section of this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe also share this video to your friends and see you in the next one bye